But this surah begins in the second person. It is as though Allah is offering one final advice to these people. And instead of, not talk, instead of talking about them, He is now talking to them. Alhaqum, It deluded you. Something deceived you. Something distracted you. And we'll get more into that when we get into the surah further. Just some other points about the nazm, the coherence and the placement of the surah. We talked about a quartet of surahs. Four surahs that are kind of bunched together in this series of surahs that we are studying. We had Surah Zilzal. إِذَا زُلْزِلَتِ الْأَرْضُ زِلْزَالَهَا It was describing the last day. The zalzala, the, the uh, earthquake of the last day. And then the very next surah started talking about even though there is that day coming, what people are behaving like nowadays. So it t- went from the future to the immediate present. إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لِرَبِّهِ لَكَنُودِ This is Surah Al-Adiyat. It came to the reality of our time right now. Even though that huge calamity is on its way, people aren't ready. Look at their attitude now. In another place, Allah Azza wa says, "Ilamu annama al-hayatu dunya la'ibun wa lahun." Know that worldly life is nothing more than play and entertainment. So this is one word, one way that word lahu is understood. Another way the word lahu is understood is that which keeps you busy and takes you away from something you're actually supposed to be doing. And that's exactly what entertainment is. Entertainment essentially is a waste of time. And you could be using that time for something more productive, but you basically lost that time entertaining yourself. That's the essence of the word lahu. But from it, when you come to the word ilha, it means to be distracted, to be pulled away from something. And in the verb itself is already embedded the idea that the thing that distracted you was less important, and the thing you were distracted away from was more important. That was more, that's already embedded in the word itself. Now, similarly, it's used in many places in the Quran. For instance, in Surah Al-Munafiqoon, Allah warns us, "Ya ayyuha ladina amanu la tulhikum." Same verb. This is over there. It's in fi'l nahi. This is in the present tense form. La tulhikum amwalukum wa la auladukum an dikrillah. Don't allow your money and your children to be to to dis, to delude you, to distract you from the remembrance of Allah. So Allah is teach, establishing a point there. When it comes to remembering Allah, then even your money and your children are less important. And they are actually distractions from remembering Allah. Actually our money and our children should be a means by which we should remember Allah. And that lesson we will learn in this surah. How do you take what you have and that becomes a means not to forget Allah, but a means to remember Allah. That's the lesson essentially in this surah. So it's, the surah begins with a complaint about us being you know, distracted, us losing the sight of things. And it concludes with a lesson that will teach us, it will teach us a profound lesson. The very things that distract us are supposed to be the things that remind us. They're supposed to be reminders. So it's a rewiring of our attitudes that's gonna take place in this surah. So alhaqum, it deluded you. I'm saying it as the subject, it deluded you. What is that it? What's the subject of the verb? What is the fa'il? It's at-takathuru. At-takathur is the next word in the ayah. So Allah is not saying it deluded you, He is saying at-takathur, which I'm not translating yet, deluded you, it distracted you. The word takathur in Arabic comes from the word kathra. Kathra means plenty. Like kathir means a lot. Kathir means a lot, right? So kathra, plentifulness. Allah Azza wa Jalla, in takathur, in tafa'ul, it means three things. I'd like you to, at least actually four things. And I'm going to go through all four of those meanings before we establish the full meaning of the ayah, inshaAllah. The first thing takathur means is the desire of having a lot. Kathir itself means a lot. At takathur, the desire to have a lot. So the first meaning is the desire to have a lot distracted you. That's the first meaning. The desire to get a lot distracted you. You were so busy wondering, I don't have enough, I need to get more. I only have a rental, I need to buy a house. I only have an old car, I need to get a newer car. I only have this much savings, I need more savings. I only have one business, I need to establish another business. I only have this, I need more. There's always this desire of getting more and more and more. Your mind was always busy doing that, and it distracted your mind from thinking about something that was more important. That's the first meaning. The second meaning of takathur is the, com- the competing in getting a lot. So the first thing was wanting a lot for yourself. The second is competing with others in getting a lot. How come that guy got more than I did? How come he has more than I do? Man, this guy got a better job. I need to compete. I need to keep up. And you know, this happens at the level of an individual. It happens at work. It could be in petty things. It could be like, man, you're, you know, you're sitting in your cubicle in your office and you got a chair. And the guy next to you got a nicer chair. And you're like, why did he get a nicer chair? Why did he get that? 
It's a silly thing, but you're like, you're wondering why, you know, he's a nicer mouse. His mouse pad is cleaner. He gets the window, he gets the window office. I don't get the window office. This could be something so petty, there are two janitors. Janitors, they, they, their job is to clean up the building. And one of them has a shinier mop, and the other one's saying, man, his mop is nicer than mine. It, this, this, this urge to compete with others in what you have. Constantly comparing your car with somebody else's car. Your house with somebody else's house. Your clothes with somebody else's clothes. Your assets, your, your wealth with somebody else's wealth. So this distracts you. The first thing was you want it for yourself. The second is you're competing with others. This attitude of competition between you, it keeps you, it keeps you busy. By the way, this attitude even takes place in social issues. They had a wedding. So how, how should our wedding, our family's wedding be better than theirs? They booked that hall, we should book a more expensive hall. They ruined themselves by going into debt, we should ruin ourselves even more by going into deeper debt. <laughs> right? But the idea is this competition. It's always there, it's always there. And of course, this even happens in the workplace among non-Muslims too. It's not just Muslims, of course. Allah is talking to all humanity here. Cutthroat. Who wants to get the promotion? Man, that guy better not get it. And if he gets it, why did he get it? Why did he not get it? When somebody gets promoted, it's not like you got paid less. You're still, you're still, there's still food on your table. But there's this natural urge inside the human being. It even happens among children. It even happens among children. You know, there, uh, you have two kids. One of them, this teacher gave your kid a star on their paper. And the other teacher didn't give them a star. Right? Because the, she gives stars on some other things. So this one kid, you're sitting in the car, you're driving home with your kids, the one kid goes, I got a star. And the other one's upset. I didn't get anything. Now the fact is, whether she got a star or not, does that hurt this first child? No. But be, what is inside already embedded? This urge of competition. I want to get everything he or she gets. I want everything they have. This is a natural tendency. And Allah Azza wa Jal alludes to that tendency in this ayah. So the first thing was wanting more, and the second was competing in more. That's the second meaning. Here's the third meaning. It is taking pride in having more. At-tafakhur ma'at takathu. To take pride in the fact that you have more. In other words, when somebody comes to you, and they're just talking about whatever, you make it a point to let them know, yeah, I graduated from that school. And, you know. and by the way, this car, I just got it two months ago. Got a really good deal. Only 37,000. They didn't ask you about your car. They didn't ask you. But you felt an urge to tell them anyway, because takathur implies, not only do you have it, you like to tell people you have it. You like to let them know, yeah, I'm, I'm doing pretty good. I got this and that and the other. Right? So th these three things so far, right? And then there's the fourth. Tafa'ul in Arabic, it has two things in it. It has mufa'ala in it, which means people competing against each other. We covered that one. But the fourth thing the word takathur has is something that is shared. Ta'awun. Competition, not just competition, but cooperation among each other. Right? When you have, what this fourth meaning is, is all of you have the same thing. All of you share the desire of wanting more. There's not one of you that wants less. Every one of you wants more. You all, have, all of you have that in common. And this common urge to want more and more and more, and to compete with each other. This one thing that has united all of you. By the way, this is one thing that unites people that are even different in religion, race, ethnicity, age. You could be different in so many ways, right? But what is, what is one thing all people have in common? They want more. They want more than what they have. Nobody's happy with what they, what they have already. And Allah says, this sentiment, this attitude, it deluded you. It distracted you. But you know in Arabic, when this verb is used, ilha, then you're supposed to also add, distracted from what? The question is, okay, I got distracted. When you say, I got distracted, you're supposed to add, I got distracted from what? I got distracted from work, I got distracted from school, I got distracted from what? And when you do that in Arabic, you add the word an. Like the ayah I shared with you, لا تلهكم أموالكم ولا أولادكم Then Allah adds, an ذكر الله Don't allow your monies and your children to distract you from what? From the remembrance of Allah. There's a from there. There's an additional information. There's a piece of information that you're expecting. Now in this surah, Allah Azza wa did not mention an ay shay. An what? Or in regards to what are we distracted? So now by leaving it open, by leaving it open, the benefit of that is it becomes itlaq. It becomes absolute. You figure it out. 
Allah wants you to figure out what is it that you're distracted from. Some of the ulama commented, the first thing, it distracted you from the truth. It distracted you from the one calling you to the truth. He's calling you to something important. You know, I'm busy with work, man. Somebody comes to you, hey, listen, why don't we learn something about Qur'an? Why don't we learn something about the sunnah of our messenger sallallahu alayhi wa I'm busy right now. And Allah is saying, your busyness is actually a distraction. And it kept you from the truth. It kept you away from it. 